President Donald Trump recently attended the National Association of Black Journalists Convention in Chicago. And at this event, he was sitting up on the stage and he allowed several black journalists to ask him questions. Now, these journalists took this as an opportunity to be unfair, to be biased, and to just flat out play hardball, right? You can tell President Trump showed up to have a genuine conversation and to be friendly and to get along. But as expected, these journalists take a different approach, right? They behave just how you would be you would expect most people in the media to behave, right? They target him, they come at him with these loaded questions that are filled with many inaccurate statements and accusations, but he handles himself very well in the heat of the moment, under fire, with unfair journalists in a somewhat unfamiliar and unwelcoming territory. He handles himself just as well as I believe anyone would be able to handle themselves in the heat of the moment like this. This first clip I'm going to be reacting to here, I'm going to play a video of one of these journalists um, basically trying to paint President Trump out as being some racist, uh, evil, white supremacist boogeyman, right? She brings up this question and it's loaded with all of these things that are just trying to make him look bad. She's looking to get a gotcha moment. She's looking to back him up into a corner and bait him into saying something that's going to make him look bad. But he doesn't fall for it because if you've paid attention in recent years, one thing Donald Trump is very good at is making the media look like the fools that they really are. So this attempt to get that gotcha moment really backfired. I'm going to go ahead and play this video right here and I'll give more of my thoughts and reactions afterward. Take a look at this. Addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen women of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. <laughs> and I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country, uh, including uh, employment, including uh, opportunity zones with Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, which is one of the greatest programs ever for uh, black workers and black entrepreneurs. I've done so much, and you know, and I say this, uh, Historically, black colleges and universities were out of money. They were stone cold broke. And I saved them, and I gave them long-term financing, and nobody else was doing it. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here, and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala, uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom, and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I, would love I think it's a very nasty question. Wow. I, I have answered the question. Trust you with another I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President Johnson who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. I let really me, do. Let I me just ask a, a follow-up, sir, and then we'll move on to other questions here. She went in for her gotcha moment, and as you can see, it backfired. He exposed her, and he exposed the event 
for being 35 minutes late and wasting his time. He exposed them for telling him that the other candidate in the presidential race, Kamala Harris, would be there, and she's not there. So as he said, he was invited under false pretense, and he gets there, and you waste his time and make him wait around for over 30 minutes before the thing even begins. And then when it finally starts, the man doesn't even get a good morning, a hello, or a how are you. They just go straight in. They just go straight in with the attack. They go straight on the offensive. But this is typical behavior coming from the media. In that one part of the video there, you saw he says, you're from ABC News, right? I consider them fake news. You can anticipate the way that these people are going to behave. A journalist like herself, they behave in, in a very nasty way, as you can see in this video here. But it backfired. So he brought up a few points to remind the audience and to remind the viewers that all of the racist things that the media and that journalist, such as the woman in this video, accuse him of doing are just baseless accusations. But they try so hard to run with this narrative. This is the narrative that's been following him since 2016, and they just won't let it die. They so desperately want him to be viewed by the American people as Hitler, right, when he's just not. And you can even tell by her demeanor and you can even tell by the way that she's coming at him with these questions and even the way that she's attempting to cut him off while he's talking, she's not actually there to conduct a fair interview. She's not actually there to ask fair questions. She's there to attack. She's there to get her gotcha moment and she is there to try to bait him into saying something that will make him look bad. But as I said, and as you just saw, he didn't fall for it. There were many other moments from this event that were also very interesting and that he also handled very well. I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and play a few of them here. So take a look at these videos. These are some of my personal favorite moments um, other than the one we just watched from this convention. I'll give more of my thoughts and reactions afterwards. Take a look at these. Some of your own supporters, including Republicans on Capitol Hill, have labeled Vice President Kamala Harris, who is the first black and Asian American woman to serve as vice president and be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. Is that acceptable language to you? And will you tell those Republicans and those supporters to stop it? How do you, how do you define DEI? Go ahead. How do you define Diversity, it? Diversity, equity, and inclusion. OK, yeah, go ahead. Is that what your definition? Give that, me, is, that, that is give literally me a definition, the word then. Would you give me a definition DEI. of that? Give me a definition of sir, that. Sir, I'm asking you a question, no, no, a you very have to direct define question. It. Define, the, define it for me, if you I would. just defined it, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage. And she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically black college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't because she was Indian all the way and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she is I think she somebody a... should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. Yeah, my J.D. Vance question sure. then. Um, to your point and to uh, Rachel's point, he, you know, has a lot of opinions about childless women like myself or divorced people like yourself. Do you think, well, I mean, but, my point is here. But at least it was said in a friendly manner. My point is, <laughs> um, do you think the party, the Republican Party is getting a little bit too judgy about people's lives when you think about abortion or when you think about what J.D. Vance is saying? I, I don't think, look, I think that uh, the... Democrat Party is really the one that has the problem. I think they're radical on abortion because they're allowing abortion in the ninth month. They're allowing the but death. I think it's they're about allowing freedom, the right? death of a baby after that's, the baby is born, based on sir, the that's, that's governor of Virginia. In every state in the country. Based on the governor of Virginia, Executive they're allowing the death of the baby after it's born. It's they're allowing crime. abortions in the eighth and ninth month. Well, of Democrats pregnancy. have denied. I think they're right. That. And, and I think the Republican Party is actually much lesser. I think I've made them much less radical, perhaps. But the Republican Party, what we're doing is bringing it back to the states where everybody wanted it. Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, everybody wanted abortion brought back. They didn't want Roe v. Wade in the federal government. They wanted it. Everybody But the majority of back. Americans oppose Roe v. Wade being overturned. They, they don't know about this that, right now. They're voting. 
It brought it back to the States. Now, I happen to believe in the three exceptions. Ronald Reagan believed with rape, incest, life of the mother. I, I do. I think most people do. I think most Republicans do also. But if you take a look, right now they're doing — it's an amazing thing. Out of the federal government, it's in states, and people are voting. And I will say, Ohio is — let's say — let's call it a more liberal version — has been approved. Uh, Kansas, the same thing. A little bit surprising to a lot of people. But the people are now voting. And it's taking this issue that's been going on for 52 years and has torn our, our country apart, and it's giving it to the people to vote on. And they're voting. Harris, that uh, — let's take one. I said, Joe and I will go and take a cognitive test. Now, I'd do it with her, too. I would do it with her also. You know what? She failed her law exam. She didn't pass her law exam, so maybe she well, wouldn't pass the cognitive oh, test. Mr. President, are you saying she wouldn't pass? Just to I'm, be clear, I'm just giving you the fact. Sir, I'd love to move over onto I different I didn't topics notice right you now. do any publicity on it at all. I won the case, the biggest case. Uh, this was this is an attack on a political opponent. I have another one where sir, I have if you a don't hostile mind, I'd love judge. To, we have you for a limited time, uh, sir. I'd love to move on to different no, topics. No, excuse me. You, you're can. the one that held me up at 35 minutes, just so you understand. So as you can see, he successfully handled that journalist in a very Trump way, which is a funny way, but in a way that also has a lot of substance and truth to it. The guy's hilarious. If you can watch each one of those clips and not laugh, there's something wrong with you, right? The guy is funny, but like I said, there's truth to it all. He didn't tell any lies, right? And I can guarantee you this, between now and election time, you will not see Kamala Harris attend an event that's being hosted by a unfriendly or unwelcoming environment where they're going to play hardball with her the way that this journalist was playing hardball with Trump. You won't see it. She's not going to step into unfamiliar territory and answer difficult questions the way that he just did in these videos that we just watched. It's just not going to happen. And I truly think when Trump goes on the offensive like this, it works to his advantage because he's good at it. Right. When he's on the offense like this, it make he becomes more likable to people who are on the fence or to people who don't know what to think, because these videos here are a perfect representation of the media, for example, like this journalist in this in these clips coming face to face with Trump. And when the media comes face to face with Trump, a lot of those baseless accusations that they like to run with and they like to try to bury his name under. Many viewers quickly see that there isn't much substance or weight to them because he is so good at just overlooking it and moving past it in a very Trump way, which, like I said, is being very funny, but also telling the truth and being accurate with the statements that he makes. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to my channel and be on the lookout. There's many more videos coming your way very soon.